Hello, we are live. We are live. Welcome, welcome to the J J F Media Show, the J A E F Media Show. I'm so excited to be with you today. Um, the J A E F <clears throat> Media Show. I am so excited to be with you today, and my name is Calvin Cavanda. And I am I am your host for today. This is episode seven of our 2024 year kickoff series. And our theme has been let there be light. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And this series, uh, I like to always give <clears throat> pardon me. I like to always give an uh an introduction. Just kind of uh, just a brief introduction, because I I never know if you listen to this, someone else has listened to this uh, for the first time, uh, whereas you have listened to the previous episodes, which I still encourage you to go ahead and listen to the previous episodes. So this has been inspired by two places where we see the word in the beginning. You know, you and I have never encountered 2024. And it's imperative that we seek light and life just as God decreed at these beginnings. The first uh, one, the first really first incidents we see in the beginning <clears throat> is in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter one, when God said, let there be light to counter the darkness that was upon the face of the deep. Now, previous ex episodes and at length of Lebert to I have taken time to explain that when you see the word darkness, it's not talking about lack of you know visual sight. No, it's an umbrella darkness, a darkness that encompasses all types of darkness. Uh the visual one, mental one, spiritual, emotional, and to, uh, uh, uh and, and the forces of darkness that uh we wrestle with Paul lets us know in Ephesians that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. <clears throat> so that's uh that's so so and and light there also talks about a light form that encompasses all types of light, the one from which the sun draws its light, the moon, the stars, uh, visual, uh, visual light as well. So, th this, so this is what we see in the beginning. And also in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, when we read it, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. So we have taken time to talk about all of that. And now we we are trying to tap into the second aspect of this of the second part of this theme. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. But first, so that's just an intro. But first, how are you doing today? Before I forget, I always like to find out how are you doing. And uh, as you know, if, if, if you've listened to some previous episodes, I like to start off every episode with a quick prayer. So, Tim, because, you know, we are going to venture into spiritual terrain and who better to take us there and uh, enlighten the eyes of our understanding than the Holy Spirit himself. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I invite your Holy Spirit into this atmosphere into on onto these airwaves, uh, into the atmosphere where whoever is listening is right now. Create a bubble around them. Create a bubble around me. Create a bubble around this time. Create a bubble of precious, uh, just fellowshipping together. We're fellowshipping around your word. You're gonna speak to us. So Lord, I ask that you will open our eyes to see, and our ears to hear, and our hearts to receive this engrafted word with meekness that is able to save our souls. And Lord, uh, you say you confirm the word preached with miracles, signs, and 
warned as following. And your word also says that you were teaching and the power of God was present to heal. So whoever is not feeling well, the power of God is right now present to heal whatever situation. Uh, if you're feeling down, may the spirit of, uh, of heaviness be uplifted off. Uh, whatever you need, the power of God is now on the move. So I just want you to also tune in your frequency, tune in, uh, uh, tune in your faith frequency to receive. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. So let there be light. Uh, one of the first things that I want to, to, to share today, and then we, and then we journey is uh, I've been really challenged. Um, you know, in Ephesians chapter five, it says, be imitators of Christ, copy him as dear children do. And we are to imitate Christ. So when I see, when I read through the gospels, and I'm trying to see how Jesus just, how he fellowshiped, you know, how he, he, he was, it was normal, you know, you know, sharing the gospel was normal to him. And, but the thing that uh, has been coming to my attention is, for instance, so that, so that you calibrate your faith frequency to receive. Um, first of all, in the parable of the sower, Jesus said, there are those who receive the word and they hear it with an open heart, with a noble and good heart. Those are the ones who they receive the word of the kingdom. And this word, they hold on to it and it transforms them. So you and I, whenever we come into an atmosphere like this, uh, we set our hearts to receive, to receive the engrafted word with meekness. I am also here to receive. You know, God's just speaking, the Holy Spirit is just speaking through me, but I'm also calibrating my heart to receive as well, you know. But something really caught my attention. In Luke chapter 5, it says, Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching, the gospel of Luke chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of God right now is present to touch us, to heal us, to deliver us, to redeem us. You and I need to, what, what, one of the things that we shared in, 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 in our manifesto was teach and preach the gospel, but then learn how to live through the gospel. You see, the gospel has got to be, become a part of us. You know, you got to have it on the go. You know, in, in Exodus chapter uh, 19, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is what it says in, in Exodus chapter 19, when they were leaving the, the uh, Exodus chapter um, I think it's Exodus chapter 12, the Passover. Yeah. Passover regulations. Uh, where is that? Where is that? The Exodus. The Passover is instituted. Um, the, there's a part where is it in Deuteronomy? There's a part where it talks about. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Bear with me. It, it's talking about you shall put it on the you shall put it everywhere on the door post on the lamp post. Yes. Uh, Exodus chapter twelve, uh, verse twenty four. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. It will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as He promised that you shall keep his 
service. And it shall be when your children say to you, what do you mean by the service that you shall say? It is the Passover. Sacrifice of the Lord who pursed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt and distracted the Egyptians and delivered our households. Now, actually, what I want is Deuteronomy. Chapter 8. Let's go there. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Yes. Remember the Lord your God. Therefore you shall keep the commandments and be aware that you do not forget. Yes. Multiply scorpions, thirsty land, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you power to make wealth. A chosen people. Okay. Here. Exodus chapter 6. This is what I wanted. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, He's talking about the what? Chapter 20. When your son asks you in time to come saying, what is the meaning of the testimonies, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, we were slaves. And I, I think somewhere in anyway, here, I got, I'm trying to find it, but uh, um, he's talking about putting it on the doorpost, just putting it everywhere, putting it everywhere, just pu putting it on everywhere. Anyways. You know, when I can't find the scripture that I'm trying to look for. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyways, let us. Yeah. Let's see. And you shall put them on the doorposts. I want to encourage you in that. Put them. Put the law on the doorposts and everywhere. Exodus. Yes, Deuteronomy chapter 6. I was there. Hallelujah. It says, you shall teach them diligently. Yes, Deuteronomy chapter 6. I was right there. I was right there. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now this is the commandment, and these are the statutes and judgments which the Lord your God has commanded to teach you, that you may observe them in the land which you are crossing over to possess, that you may fear the Lord your God and to keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command you and which I command you and your son and your grandson all the days of your life. And that, and that your days may be prolonged. Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord your God. As the Lord God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Okay? And these words, this is what I wanted. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 says, And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And then in Joshua chapter 1, I'm just dropping off some quick exhortations that the Lord really encouraged me with today. Um, so here he's telling us you got to have the word everywhere. The word's got to be everywhere, right? have the word everywhere in front of you hear it have it in front of you because the more you hear it the scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god the more you see it, the more you confess it just have an atmosphere charged with the word of god have scriptures everywhere 
Now, in Joshua chapter 1, God gives, which is going to lead me to something that we see Jesus uh, uh, do in Luke chapter 8. In Joshua chapter 1, uh, verse 7, God says, uh, this book of the law, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For therein you'll make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It's saying to have this word with us all the time. Now, this is talking about having it in front of you. But what about receiving it? Uh, one of the things that the Lord was just showing me. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 8. And then I'll talk about that. And you and I can get to where we were going. So, remember, Luke chapter 5, it says, He was teaching. It says, And the power of God was present to heal them. You see, anytime we start talking about the word of God, the power of God is present. But we Christians have, we, we don't realize the privilege that we have. Man, let me first read for you Luke chapter 8, and then I, I just briefly talk on that. Luke chapter 8 says, Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Teaching, preaching, and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Look what happened after that. It says, And the twelve were with him, and certain women who were healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, Mary, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom came seven demons, and Jonah, wife of Chusa, Herod, Steward, and Susanna, and many others who provided for him and his substance. And when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him everywhere he spoke a certain parable, talked about the parable of the sower. So the point is, here he says he was teaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. What I'm trying to say is this. Many a times, uh, one of the things that I've noticed is the body of Christ, we've, we've split the gospel. You know, we want to hear only certain aspects of the gospel. We um, we can't, you, you see, there's a difference. You see, I was asking myself, you see, Jesus, Jesus never had a session where he said, Today, I'm going to teach about prosperity. Or today, I'm going to teach about healing. He used, actually, the physical needs of people to show, to manifest the kingdom. So he says, in, in Luke chapter 8, he says he was teaching. In, in Luke chapter 5, he says he was teaching them, and the power of God was present to heal. So I've been asking myself, what was he teaching them? And then in Luke chapter 8, he says he was preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Jesus always talked about the kingdom of God. And then he'll tell you how it operates. He'll tell you that the kingdom of God, there is forgiveness. He'll tell you that in the kingdom of God, there is a feast that is held and everything is made ready and, 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 the, and, the, and the guest and, and the host will send out his servants, say, go call these invited guests and they'll turn him down. He'll say the kingdom of God is like uh, these, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. But one thing that caught my attention is Jesus just talked about the kingdom. Um, when he encountered uh, Peter and them, because they, they were dealing with a financial situation. Let's look at it. Luke chapter 5. But he was just teaching the kingdom. After that, he ministered to their needs. Luke chapter 5. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God. Listen, to hear the word of God. 
you got to get into a place where you want to just hear the word of God. We restrict the, the word of God to saying, I want to hear word of God on prosperity. I want to hear word of God on healing. Now, those are good. I want to hear word of God. Deliver. But what I'm saying is, I'm, I'm, one of the things you'll see that I'll be challenging us is, for instance, I'll show you passages of scripture that many Christians don't read because they are kingdom centric. Most of them talk, they're talking about heaven. They're talking about the workings of heaven. You know, before I used to be the kind of person where if I read the Bible, I would only look forward to the miracles, you know, feeding on the 5,000, raising the dead, healing so and so, uh, catching fish. And, but when I started to desire to know more about the kingdom of God, uh, there's so many scriptures that I, that I now are my bread and butter and not the, the, the ones for the miracles and whatever, because I have genuinely graduated to a place where I just want to hear the word of God. So, for instance, you might be going through a problem. Let's say it could be a, a sickness. But you might not realize. You might be looking for a healing sermon. We, we, listen, it's okay. Uh, these vitamins and then these painkillers. But what I'm saying, we got to get to a place where we enjoy taking vitamins of the word of God. But one thing I'm noticing, Jesus would was just teaching principles on the kingdom of God. And he'll turn around and heal someone. He'll turn around and minister to someone's financial need. He'll turn around and perform a deliverance. So I'm recalibrating my processor that any time I'm in the atmosphere of the word of God, I tune my frequency, my faith to the frequency that the moment the word of God is present, that the power of God is also present to heal. So the moment this show began, the scripture says where two or three are gathered, he is in our midst. So right now, the power of God is present to heal. Because we're talking about the kingdom. So it's one thing that I, I, I'm now learning to calibrate. You don't have to wait until Sunday, until a revival tent meeting, until uh, a special man of God is coming to town for you to get your healing, to get your needs met. Just immerse yourself in the kingdom, the word of the kingdom. So. You'll notice that I, when I'm always sharing, I lean more towards that. I, I look at, I want to share the kingdom of the word of God. And in the kingdom, as, as I'm sharing the word of the kingdom of God, my expectation, that's why I have to let you know, is the power of God by faith and trusting is already present to heal. So in Luke chapter five so we'll look at those scenarios again and you'll see that many miracles actually in scripture happen on the back of jesus would teach and then the power of god will start to flow and then that power of god will start to look to supply where there was lack where there was healing I want you to notice that pattern. So don't go to the part of the miracle when you're reading scripture. Don't, don't rush to the part where the miracle happens. Build your faith up. Read before the miracle. Read and let, be nourished with a, get, get a, get a balanced diet. Many Christians are not well rounded. They're, they are one sided only. You know, they're, they're not, and maybe this is for the people who minister the word of God. They're one-sided. No, just, this is, this is something that's changing, recalibrating my expectation. 
as long as I'm immersed in the presence, the atmosphere of the word of God, it says the power of God is present to heal. Okay. Not just to heal, but to deliver, to provide and supply. So you and I got to have these hangout sessions where we just come. We hear the word of God. And after that, a simple prayer at the end. I expect miracles to start happening. Why? Again, in Mark chapter 16, in Mark chapter 16, it says, thank you, Holy Spirit. In Mark chapter 16, it says, hmm, Mark chapter 16, verse 19 says, So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord, working with them and confirming the word preached, confirming the word that these guys were preaching through the accompanying signs. What were the signs? says, these signs will follow those that believe in my name. They'll cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it will not by any means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So you and I have to get into this habit of, I want to hear about the kingdom. And so today uh, I'm going to, but I have to give this, I have to give kind of recalibrate us before we go where we're going, because we're going to be tapping into, ooh, some things that um you see thank you holy spirit you know that scripture that says seek you first the kingdom of god matthew chapter 6 i'll share it i'll show you something that um i'll share an, an, an illustration that you you just never thought about have a look at that scripture. Matthew chapter 6 is talking about do not worry. Um, man, I don't know about you, but I'm having a really good time. I'm enjoying this. I really hope you're enjoying this. By the way, my my audio tunes are uh, something I had to tweak in my in my um uh recording set is working so let's give jesus uh a round of applause <laughs> all right so look at this passage in matthew chapter 6 the verse says, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, we always read this verse. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Let me show you what I mean when Jesus was teaching the kingdom. Why? I want you to set your heart posture on seeking first the kingdom of God, but in a different way than you've been told before. Let me share an, an illustration. If I told you, now I'm in Canada, right? But if I told you wherever country you are in and I said, seek the kingdom of the United, or, or seek the kingdom of the United Kingdom, what is the first thing you're going to do? Seek the kingdom of the United Kingdom. What is the first thing you're going to do? You're probably going to look online and say, well, where is the United Kingdom? Okay. Um, and then you're going to, you, 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 you're going to buy an air, uh, an air ticket, right? So seek first the king, the, the kingdom of God. Seek now. I'm telling you, seek the United Kingdom. 
the kingdom of the United Kingdom. And all these things will be added unto you. So you 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 purchase a ticket, you 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 travel from whatever country you're in, you land in the in you know in London, wherever you, you decide to to wherever your arrival airport is, and then you go up to Birkingham Palace. Right? Okay. So do you see what happened? So you you're sick in the kingdom. However, now you are the guests of the United Kingdom. Let's say it's going to take you one year from the moment you arrive. And let, and let's use January right now. It's January. You've arrived at the gates of the Parley, uh, uh, the, 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 the gates of the United Kingdom, of, of the Buckingham Palace. So now you, it, let's say it's going to take you one one year, 12 months to go from one end from the front gate all the way to the end. The end being that at a certain in December of 2024, you will finally get to meet the king, King Charles. Right? I want you to use this illustration because it's it ties into a lot of the things I'm talking about. And I want you to change how you approach the atmosphere when you're in the when you are in the presence of the word of god now we're using that scripture in matthew chapter 6 verse 33 that says but seek ye first the kingdom of god and all these things will be added unto you and i'm i'm showing you an illustration so it's january you've got into buckingham palace but you have been promised that at the end of 12 months in december 2024 you will meet King Charles. So as you enter Buckingham Palace, you, you're going to become so self-conscious. You know, you're going to become um, very, yeah, you're going to become very self-conscious. Oh, you're going to start thinking royalty. I'm in the presence of royalty. You're going to see the way they cut their lawns. You're going to see butlers. You're going to see those guards who stand, well, I've forgotten what their names are, and, and, and they don't flinch. You're going to see them doing different things. But as you're moving January all the way to December, making your way to the throne of King Charles, uh, now that you're inside Buckingham Palace, they're going to tell you, Sir, Mom, uh, we have a guest wing. Please follow us. Now, guess what? You you are you gonna have to pay accommodation? No, they don't charge people accommodation when they enter the Buckingham Palace. You know, these guest rooms. So guess what? Rent is taken care of. Um, they're gonna tell you we have um dinner is served at this time, a breakfast is at this time, lunch is at this time, the the buffet hall is this way. Are you gonna have to worry about I didn't come with enough pounds to buy food, to buy dinner, to buy lunch, to buy breakfast. No, it is taken care of. Because why? You are seeking to go to meet Prince Charles, but all these things are being added unto you. That's how we must approach this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek to know the workings of the kingdom of God. The other things, he starts to take care of you. He starts to take care of you. Let's say you have an illness and you're inside during this 12 month year adventure, you have an illness, let's say an airport. And they say, once you enter Buckingham Palace, you can't leave. Because if you leave, we have to prepare you again for protocol to get to meet King Charles. You have to be ushered, you have to be prepared. Uh, a 12-month preparation to meet King Charles. Now, let's say in March, April, you get sick. Guess what? You're going to have access to the same doctors that work and treat everyone in Buckingham Palace. So your health care is now taken care of. Your transportation is taken care of. Seek ye first the kingdom. So it's come to my attention that Jesus was teaching the kingdom, the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And then they'll say, 
they'll bring someone that needs healing. Be, and that will be taken care of because as he was teaching, the power of God was present to heal. God wants you and I to know more about the mysteries of the kingdom of God. To know, Not just to know God for he's a God who supplies rent. He's a God who supplies a house. He's a guy, He's a God who supplies a wife. These things in heaven, these things that we're, these things are already there. He wants you to be, he wants you to be in awe of his splendor. Have you ever asked yourself, like when you read the Psalms, the Psalms never talk about like, they're always talking about his magnificence, his awe. They say he feeds every living thing. He rides on the wings. He sends lightning and it says, I have arrived. He he commands this and it happens. At the voice, at the at the oh, breath of his nostrils, the 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 the, the, the he he mocks the mountains. They skip like rams. They skip like lambs. The mountains flee like his voice thunders, echoes, and and ah. Oh, it, like it's always talking about his magnificence, his his allness. God wants to be looked at that way. God doesn't want you to come to him to be a Christian who's only coming for deliverance. Come to him and say, wow, you, you tell me that I was predestined, going back to Romans. Romans says, those he foreknew, he predestined. Those he predestined, he called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. He says, wow, you said before I came to be in my mother's womb, you knew me, you ordained me a prophet unto the nations. Wow, you say that I'm fearful and wonderfully mad. And that's why even in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, he says, call unto me and I will answer thee. He says, but I will show you great and mighty things thou knowest not. God wants us to, 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 to seek this allness nature in him he wants his children to come to him to be in awe of him and say wow you planned this before the foundation of the world lord you were wonderful you were amazing that's why the beast around the throne in revelation says they describe holy 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 lord god almighty who was who is who is to come Come to seek first the kingdom. Paul says, let our eyes and heart be fixed on things above. God wants us to be so interested in the workings of the kingdom of God from, you know, heaven, because that's where we're going. We're sojourners through this planet. God is expecting us. You think about it the same. Let's say if you've never been to Mexico or to one of the Virgin Islands and, and, and you're going on vacation. The same way you, you look up and say, wow, they have this, they have that. We're going to go, we're going to go do this, we're going to go do this. This is how, this is the language they speak. This is the food they eat. This is the music they listen to. This is what they do. And that excitement about the trip that you're going on makes it even better. God wants us to sit at his feet, as it says in Jeremiah 33, and I will show you great and mighty things thou knowest not. So you see, as you're sojourning, as you're spending these 12 months learning the protocol before you meet King Charles, eventually, you get to have a meeting with him. It's December. You're ready to meet the king. And that's why the scripture says, in his presence is fullness of joy, and his right hand are pleasures forevermore.
now you're the feet. Now, now you've come face to face with the king. And you're like Esther. You're walking in with your best royal robe. And the king says, what is it, Esther? What do you want? I'll give you even up to half of my kingdom. You see, personally, this is how I like to pursue God. This is, this is where I, I'm always intrigued by the workings of the kingdom. That's where I am. I'm like, wow. This. So you hear me talk a lot about some things that I see in scripture and, and, and things that just blow my mind. And, and I was like, why? But now I start to see it through scripture. Jesus came and he would say, the kingdom of God is like this. The more we learn about the kingdom, the more our minds are drawn into the onus, the wonderful nature, his magnificence, the more we seek those things, these other things will just be added to us. Because as you seek the kingdom, as you're getting closer to the throne of King Charles, you know, you receive different garments. You receive different barges that say, yeah, this one, we've certified him. He can come right next to the king. And the king, when you're in the presence of the king, it takes but him stretching out his scepter, right? Stretches out his scepter and calls for you. So um, the blessing of Aaron in Numbers chapter 23 that all of us love to read. Um, Numbers chapter 6. The priestly blessing. This is what happens when you're in the presence of the king. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So I want to challenge you on that. Okay, are you ready to hear something? Something about, um, let's segue into, I want us to spend a few minutes uh, talking about introducing, uh, getting back into in him is life. And this life is the light of man. Let's take a quick um, time out. Let's see here. Who do we have? Maybe. All right, um, so let there be light. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. We've already spent a lot of time talking about the first light bulb, which was finding yourself in scripture. And this was based on these two scriptures. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, we see Jesus himself quoting from Psalms 42. Behold, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O Lord. And then said I, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will. Now, hmm. let us let's go back to Hebrews chapter ten, verse. Five, it says, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. 
in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then said I, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do your will, O God. And I said, This does not only apply to Jesus, it applies to the rest of us. Why is that? Because of Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. Let's go right there. I like to read it from the uh, King James instead because of how it puts it. So Galatians chapter 2, 21. Again, the, I'm just doing a recap. The first light bulb that you and I need when it comes to in him was life. The life was the light of man. Is There's a scripture. Uh, is a, it's a psalm. It says, in your light, we see light. Uh, but Psalms 119 says, your word is a lamp unto my my feet and a light unto my path. You and I need to find out what has been prophesied about us. Well, how do we get these prophecies? And I'm trying to show you uh, in the volume of the book, it's not only written about Jesus, but it's also written about you. So Galatians chapter 2, 20, 21, 20 to 21 is what lit me up the first time I saw this. I was going to God, I was crying. I said, Lord, I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. And God said to me, Calvin, do you realize that the scriptures are not only written about me, but you? I was like, what? He said, yeah. He said, he, he brought Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. Behold, I come in the volume of the book, you should know me. Uh, I come to do thy will. And then he also brought Galatians 2, 20, 21. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 to 21, that says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not first share the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead, is dead in vain. But there in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, He's saying that we are crucified with Christ. Us who are in Christ are crucified with him. Then he says, we leave. Then he says, but yet not us anymore. But Christ now lives in us. Christ has now come to dwell in us. And then he says, now this life that we live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. So, you and I can find what has been written about us as well in the volume of the book. As I said, I personally did it from Isaiah to Malachi, picking out scriptures that spoke to me. Now, the Lord reminded me recently, said, Calvin, I want you to go back and do this again. Because in Hebrews chapter 10, verse Hebrews chapter 4, it says, for the water God, says, for the water God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the water God changes. So what what I saw in that season of my life when I first came across this revelation, the prophecies that I was able to capture about my life, which have helped me greatly, these other prophecies, because scripture is progressive revelation. I have grown since uh, when I first encountered this was end of 2022. In December of 2022, I believe this is when I first my, my, I came across this understanding and revelation. And the Word of God has evolved. It's moving. It's living. There's another illustration that the Holy Spirit just reminded me, which ties into what we're going to talk about. I'll, 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 I'll. But you see, the Word of God, you cannot read it one time and say, I've gotten what I need out of it. No, the Word of God is. And why is that? Why is it that you can read the Word of God today? It can say, it can speak to you saying, go 10 steps. You come back, you read the same word of God, and this time it's, it's almost seems like it's telling you, now take 10 steps to the right. Instead of 10 steps forward, now it's saying, okay, stop, take 10 steps to the right. Because the word of God 
is living. It is alive. And he he's the reason why. Let me bring in our menu for today. Okay. This word here, I've said it and I'll keep reminding you. This, many people say this is the Bible. Yeah, we call it the Bible. Now, I, I say the word of God. But what I want you to understand, these words here, as I like to always say, this is like an architectural plan. This is a blueprint. The words we see here are a blueprint of the spirit realm. These, these words here show us what is happening in the spirit realm. So when you read the word of God, the reason we need to read it every day, it's a lie. Today, it might lead you into a different city in the spirit realm. Tomorrow, you might need to go to another city and you still need it to direct you into that city in the spirit realm. Listen, let me pull some scriptures here. We're, we, we're going to narrow down for now. We're going to use the, uh, the gospel of John. And there was a phrase that stood out to me that says the scripture cannot be broken. So again, let me layer it. So we have figured out that you and I, in the volume of the book, it's also written about us. Okay, so now we, how do we start to navigate through this word and um, find ourselves? Okay, that's one aspect. Now, what confidence, this is what I want to first address. What confidence should you and I have on the word of God? Because you see, what I find in the body of Christ, I want you to become independent. I want you to become, to, to no matter what situation you're in, no matter where you are, I want you to say, as long as I have the word of God with me, I can get out of this situation. So the first layer that I want you now, what we're going to be talking about is the power of scripture. I want to just show you different examples that scripture dictated what happened in the natural. But I've, I've always, we've always read it as that. But just this week, the Holy Spirit asked me to to start using these phrases differently. This is the phrase. So let me first read it, and then I'll talk about, I'll, I'll give it more context scripturally. Now, let me first read some scriptures. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4, we read a statement that you might just gloss over and just be like, you might just run across it. Paul says, for I delivered to you, first of all, that which was all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Okay. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Ah. The scripture just doesn't. You see, John said, that if all the things that Jesus did were written, that the world will not have enough books to contain them. My goodness. So every single word that you and I see in this Bible, every single word of God that you and I see in, in this thing we call the Bible, every single word has real estate value. The Holy Ghost 
with discernment, analyze all of the things that Jesus did. And he chose these writings, the things that we see in the Word of God. Well, someone says, well, how is that the Word of God? I'm, I, you're the one I'm going to be talking to right after he, after, right in a few minutes from now. Few, yeah, a couple of minutes. So that understanding alone always challenges me to say there's something that is hidden here. You can never exhaust the depths or the heights of God's word. Because it's leaving. The reason is because the same way you can never you can never exhaust. Oh, I'm trying to think about it. Okay, you think about it. Let's say you have a map. On a map, they can't put everything on a map. Let's say even Google Maps. Not everything is captured on Google Maps. Now they're trying to do as best as they can. But when you put in your GPS, it take me to this location. There's so many, you know, you think about it, actually. Yeah, no, no, it's perfect. You see, even Google Maps, when you just put in your direction and say, get me from here to here, it blurs out every surrounding region. Because it's narrowing your focus. You're saying, I want to go from A to B. If you're looking at that Google route map, you won't see everything in the natural atmos, in the natural, on the roadsides, actually show up on your route. But as you follow Google Maps, if you're driving, you say, wow, I didn't know this was there. I didn't know this was there. I didn't know this was there. The word of God is how we enter into the spirit realm. So these, you, most people look at these as just words. No, this is a mapping of the spirit realm. So <laughs> when you read a verse like 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 4, that says, for I delivered to you. Um, why, 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 why wouldn't he just say? For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins and stopped there. And he was buried and that he rose again on the third day. Why, why did he stop? Why, 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 why wouldn't he just stop there? Why does he have to put according to the scriptures? According to the scriptures. Now, let's, let's borrow another scripture. I'll explain this point and then... Um, Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 to 5. And then you'll see something there. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 to 15 reads, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what was written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. But specifically, the verse that I want us to, to look at there, it says, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. Now, I can read that and say, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, there is a comma after faith, but I can just read it and go, and since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, meaning that the spirit of faith I have is according to what is written, or... I can read it as, and since we have the same spirit of faith, comma, according to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. So there's two ways I can interpret that. I can say that I have a spirit of faith based on what was written, or I already have a spirit of faith 
Now, based on what was written, I believe and therefore I spoke. You see what I mean? So either way, it's saying that I can say I have this and we having the same spirit. I can I can read it as, and we having the same spirit of faith according to what is written, which would mean that the faith I have is according to what is written. Or I can say, and we have in the same spirit of faith. Stop, take a comma, take a pause there, and then read it as, according to what is written, I believed. You see that? You, you see that? According to what is written, I, <clears throat> I believed. Hmm. And therefore speak. So. Let me capture this phrase according to the scriptures and it says Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried and raised again the third day according to the scriptures. And then also according to what is written, some spirit of faith according to what is written or according to what is written, I believe and therefore I speak. According to what was written, he's talking about according to what was written in his word. I was looking at that and then the Holy Spirit was challenging me. He says, Calvin, I, I want you to start reading whenever you see according to what was written or according to the scriptures. I want you to start reading that this way. According to what was written in the spirit of his word. You see, this word of God here. I'm talking about the literal one here that we see on these pages. This is the letter of his word, but the lettering of his word carries within it the spirit of his word. This so when you see the scripture saying, according to what was written, or according to the scriptures, it is not talking about what was physically, it's talking about more than what was physically written in here, because it's according to the spirit of his word, because that which was from the beginning, remember, we're talking about John, it says that which is from the beginning was his word in spirit form. Jesus is talking to the woman of the well and says, the words that I speak to you, no, no, no. They say God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. This is John chapter six. And this was a heated one, heated session. And so Jesus, Jesus starts to say, um, John chapter six, I believe it's 63. No, John chapter six. 63, I believe so. Yeah. Hmm. He says, mm, yeah, John chapter 6, 63 says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. But there's some of you who do not believe. You need to start to see the spirit of his word inside the lettering of his word. Mm. You hear that? You need to start to see the spirit of his word inside the lettering of his word and that's why paul says the letter kills but the spirit gives life and jesus he is the one who, he, he's saying he's saying it here it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing the words i speak to you are spirit and they are life so with that understanding now i have to address you someone that said yeah, but the Bible.
men of God were just authors of the Bible. Second Peter chapter one. Second, uh, second Peter chapter one, the second epistle of Peter chapter one, verse 16 says, for we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came down from heaven, and we were with him on the holy mount. Listen, but Peter says, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light which shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man. But holy men of God, holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was downloading to them what was written in the spirit realm. So you see, when he said that which was in the beginning, written according to his word, right? That the scripture might be fulfilled. Well, which scripture? No, it's talking about what was written in the spirit of his word. Because that which was in the beginning, as it says, in the beginning was the word. It was not in that word there. In the beginning was the word in spirit form. That's why he says the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. In later on in John chapter 1 verse 14. The spirit form of the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So. But Peter is saying prophecy, the scriptures were not written according to the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Wow. But he says, we have a sure word of prophecy, which you do well to take heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the dead dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Wow. You and I have a sure word of prophecy. If you and I can find ourselves in scripture, it's game over. Because Paul, talking to Timothy, tells him this. I love this. I love this. Uh, that is in... Uh, 1st Timothy, 1st Timothy, um, first Timothy chapter 1 verse 18, Paul speaking to Timothy about fighting the good fight of faith, fighting the good fight tells him, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, having faith and a good conscience, which, ha which some have rejected concerning the faith of suffered shipwreck. Paul is encouraging us that once you have your prophetic word of, of prophecy from Scripture, you have solid grounds to wage warfare. So. But I like how it says, we do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. You see, in him was life, and the life is the light of men. You and I, we, we, we who have received Jesus Christ into our hearts, now we need to start drawing on that light to guide our path. Because we're encountering forces of darkness in every arena. So we're going to be journeying around to see that Jesus, and I'm just going to be pre presenting, pre uh, presenting evidence that 
many things that happened in Jesus' ministry, he was referencing what did the scripture say? Because what scripture has prophesied makes available a natural manifestation. You see, Jesus, when Jesus told his disciples, go and get me a donkey, scripture had prophesied that. So he, his faith that that guy, they will walk into that town, see a man, see a cult, a young cult has never been ridden on, tell, them, tell the man the Lord has need of it. That man could not say no because scripture had already uh, created a natural opening that Jesus, you see, this is, this is scripture. Scripture is the container. Scripture goes ahead of you, right? And scripture lays the train tracks for manifestation. Then for you, you come like this. You're like a train, right? Th this is scripture. Scripture goes ahead of you. And then for you, you are, you are a train following these train tracks. Scripture is the container in which we move. It's like a tunnel. Scripture, do you see, you see a tunnel through a mountain? That's what scripture does. That's why the, 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 the scripture says he has sent his word to the ends of the earth. Let me find that for you. He has sent um, his word to the end of the earth. Psalms 107, verse 20. Mm. Yes. Psalms 19, verse 4. Let's go there. Let, let, let's see the quote. Psalms 19, verse 4. I think that's the one that I want. I want, I, 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 I want you to get excited. And then we're going to start pursuing the kingdom of God. I want you to come back into scripture. Psalms 19 verse. Mm -hmm. It says the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech. And night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. So 2024, had, the word about 2024 had already been sent out. That curving has already been made into this, if you want to call it this vacuum of time or this um, entity of time. 2024, the word had already been sent out. The tunnel has already been uh, blown through the mountain of time. And so for us, we're coming in. We're coming in. But we need light to show us where the turner is. So scripture goes ahead of us and then we come forth. Uh, that's when manifestation happens. That's when manifestation happens. So we're going to see that many things that Jesus did, he was doing them according to the scriptures. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Scripture has already made a provision for us. So you and I need to start tapping into that. And so the first thing we'll do is we will um, journey through that phrase that the scripture might be fulfilled. And you'll see the impact of that phrase. But now the thing that I want you to take away from this second half of this episode is no longer read your Bible, uh, differentiate that the words you read, that is the lettering of his word. But in that lettering of his word, 
a direction into the spirit of his word. Okay? I want you to now be mindful of that. That this is our blueprint into how the spirit realm operates. Right? So, so we shall be journeying through some references on uh, the word scripture and seeing how it is used in the book of John. In the book of John is a book of divine life. It's showing us the divinity of the Christ. And we keep seeing the phrase that the scripture might be fulfilled, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And when I, what that really means is that that the scripture might be fulfilled is means that there will be a fulfillment of what was written in the spirit realm before the foundation of the world. That's, that's mind blowing. So if you can know what is being, what has been written in the volume of the book concerning you, then you're going to walk in more manifestation of the power of God because Jesus didn't try to step outside of what was written. No, he says the son can do nothing apart from the father. The son does what he sees the father do. The father teaches him all things. As he sees the father raise the dead, so the son does likewise. So you have to see, you have to get um, that empowering that scripture becomes your gateway into what has been written in the spirit realm. Because that is where manifestation is going to flow. And so you and I have to start moving according to that. Jesus was trying to do what he saw the Father do. Jesus was not trying to do any new things. No, the Father's already made provision for it. I've seen the Father do it this way. Jesus would just literally copy paste. And when you start to walk in that revelation, you have your faith. You know, you're no longer moved, tossed to and fro like the winds. So that's where we'll be journeying from. And then we'll journey into another phrase that I want us to look into is a phrase called light. You and I will be looking to capture this word, light, light. Why do we keep seeing this word light, light in scripture, light? Everything seems to be based on light, 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 light this, light that, light this, light that. Darkness, light, day, night, life, death, death, life. Those, seems, those words seem to be the containers, the parent containers of the spirit realm. Let there be light, darkness, life, death, um, day, night. You and I need to start understanding these parameters. And so we'll be journeying through scripture in this series, and uh, we shall be um, doing that. So. Anyways, I trust that uh, you have been touched and you, you have been inspired. Uh, I always like to help uh, calibrate us, our minds, our thinking uh, for where we're going. We're, we're heading into a place where you and I, we're just going to seek the kingdom, different aspects of the kingdom to understand, to have our minds blown by the kingdom of God, how the kingdom operates. And the word of God will do the work. As long as you and I start to have this expectation that as long as I'm in the presence of the word of God, the power of God is ready to heal. And that's what we're going to do right now. I'm just going to pray as we close out. And God will confirm his own word. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the broken heart. You see the first thing he did? He says, he's anointed me because he has what? <clears throat> to preach the gospel to the poor. And then everything else comes after, the, after you hear the gospel. Then to heal the broken heart. Preach the gospel to the poor. 
then heal the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to the captives, to recover your sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those that are oppressed, to proclaim the accept of the way of the Lord. And seven, which you didn't read here, is to uh, on the day of vengeance of our God. You know? So, you and I have been at the feet of Jesus. So, let's pray. I always like to close this out with a quick prayer. And then, uh, yeah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we trust that your power was present to heal and is now still present to heal. So, may your Holy Spirit manifest uh, healing and deliverance to each and every one of us that is listening to this right now in the name of Jesus. If you need a physical healing, the power of God is present to heal. Just touch wherever you're hurting right now. And in the name of Jesus, I command healing to manifest and flow into your body, whatever it is in the name of Jesus. Uh, if you need peace of mind, I command every tormenting spirit to leave you right now, every serpent and scorpion in the name of Jesus. Uh, Jesus was preaching. After he taught the word, he told the disciples, hey, cast out your nets. And they say, Master, we have told all night, but nevertheless, at thy word, we shall let down the nets. He took care of a financial need after he had just been teaching the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. So in the name of Jesus, if it is a job promotion, if it is an interview, if it is a bank approval, whatever you need financially, in the name of Jesus, may the power of God flow and manifest itself may gyra manifest in your life today hallelujah gyra god our provider in the name of jesus um if you're in a tight situation and you need the help of god to show up may ebenezer the god your helper manifest right now i send that name right now peter said silver and gold have i none but such as I have given to you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. So in the name of Jesus, may emotional heartbreak depart from your heart right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What else, Holy Spirit? What else, Holy Spirit? Um, a desire and passion to read the word of God. If you want to extend your capacity and say, Lord, I want to seek the intricacies, the inner workings of the kingdom of God. I no longer just want to come for heal me, God, provide this. I want to know you. John said, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. Fellowship. Koinonia. May you, may the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. May the Holy Spirit give you access. To how the kingdom of God operates. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Um, you want a car. Um, I don't know why I'm hearing that. Um, you want a car. Someone wants a car. You went and looked at some prices. And you don't know if you can afford it. Well may the God. Who makes all grace. Abound to visit you and make a way for you to attain that new car. And it was red. It was a red car that you went to look at. May you receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we thank you that we can get to sit down and hear the word of God and just be in your presence and hear you speak to us. Lord, may every word that has been sown in our hearts May we keep it from persecution, from offense, from the birds of the air, from Satan who comes to steal the word. May we keep it in our hearts. May we hear it with our hearts that we may bear fruit with, 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 uh, with, with patience in the name of Jesus. Amen. What else is there? Um, our final, our exhortation for the day. I like this one. It says, watch. Stand first in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love be with you all 
in Christ Jesus. Amen. And as always, your host for this episode was Calvin Cavanda. We hope this episode blessed your heart. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you. The Lord bless and keep you from the evil one. Thank you for tuning in and see you on the next episode. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye. Bye.